get to it tomorrow because I need your counsel. Oh, that's that's a Karshian tease. Or it's because we have to reset this lion stuff <laughs> because it's a Monday in, in, in the Motor City. I want to know where you guys are at. I'm uh, I'm done with moral victories. I'm grading this every week on win-loss. And for those of you, well, you know, they were five-and-a-half-point dog. I, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. The Bears were underdogs to the Niners. Beat them. Steelers, David. Mitch Mania on the road against Bengals. Beat them. Giants with Danny Dimes and the blank stare. The backing band. They go on the road and beat the Titans. Okay, like, guys, I could do this every week. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of the fake comebacks. I'm tired of a coach who can't manage the clock. The onside kick. And by the way, would it kill the Lions to have the number two overall pick just come out and be like, damn, they, that was great. Aiden Hutchinson was terrible. Yeah, but maybe this just kind of goes to what we said before the draft. May not be that great of a draft up top. Well, let's, I, want, I don't want to do any of that. I'm just grading this singular performance. Okay. Where Pro Football Focus said there's only one defensive end in football who was worse than him in week one. 120th out of 121st, 21 players. Does a terrible debut. It doesn't go any further than that. Maybe it was Kayvon Thibodeau, and he didn't play. (laughs) (laughs) I got nothing. Um, But I want to hear from you guys because fans were incredible. I thought they were going to win that game. I picked them to win the game. Here we are again. On script, 7-0. Offense falls asleep. Defense can't get off the field. They make a collection of stupid errors. Tracy Walker gets thrown out of the game. You got your all-pro center beefing a snap on a critical third down. Just the same mistakes, the same mismanagement, and the same result where they do just enough to make you believe. And I'm tired of it. And I'm also tired of the same person calling Kenny and hanging up the phone. Stop it. Get a life. 248-539-9797. I want to hear from you guys because maybe you're not at the point that I'm at. Maybe you think moral victories still play. Maybe you're still encouraged. It's a win-lose league. And frankly, this was a game that 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 was right there for them. And they blew it. No, it is. And it's it's one of those, Mike, where I always say it always feels like Charlie Brown and Lucy with their football. Every time you think, okay. I'm going to be able to kick the football. No, you're not. Okay, we're going to come back. We're going to win this. Nope, we found a way to lose this game. Wow, we kicked an onside kick with a 9% chance of probability of working. Like At some point, somebody has to whisper in his ear. Coach, you, you know this isn't the old school way of doing onside kicks. They don't work anymore. That's a less than a 10% chance that it's going to happen. Sorry, don't do it. Hawaii probably had a better chance of beating Michigan than that onside kick happening. Bar none. <laughs> that was the saddest football game I ever watched. You could you could have you could have had Pat Sajak and Vanna White. You could have Harbaugh could have spun a wheel. Every play was going to get ten yards. I mean, hey man, look. Here's what we know. We know Michigan's a good football team, but beyond that very general description. If you're taking anything out of these games, you're a functioning moron. This is as embarrassing as it gets. Pretty sure Colorado State just lost to DeVry University. You were 50-some-odd points. You're 50-point favorites again this week against UConn. I don't know what to tell you. I, I just you're don't. four in the nation, and you got your quarterback. Are they? And that's all. No, I'm saying I don't know. That's all they want to hear. I don't care what they want to hear. I'm making a point. They might be, Hey. Everything could be on the table in the Big Ten. They, they could win the damn thing. But I'm not saying that out of anything I've seen. The teams they're playing are so egregiously bad. It was. I don't know what to say. And I they're going to go out against UConn. What they, do I take out of it? They could have blinded, folded Harbaugh, gave him a dartboard, and just said, throw it at the board, and that's the play we run. It could have been like Mad Libs. Let's put blank in at quarterback and run this play right. to this side. But here's what I'll tell you. I, I only know that there's one great team in America. It's Georgia. Nobody else great. Bama should have lost by 17 if Quinn Ewers didn't get hurt. You know what? Texas A&M beefed the game at home to App State. And we will we'll discuss this uh, during the week. I know. I can't help it. As much as I owe you, you an apology for DeAndre Swift, <laughs> I owe 
the Ewers family an apology because I thought he was going to be the biggest bust in college football since Johnny Manziel. I didn't think he was any good. He was very good. I thought he was all hype, and he walked out there, and the very first plays, it's 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 like uh, he wasn't afraid at all. No, right, right. Uh, the the Texas wide receiver, um, Worthy, Xavier yeah, Worthy. Xavier Worthy. I'm looking at the, like, oh boy, you two got another year together. And Bama, the O line stinks. The defensive backs look a little bit slow. Kool Aid McKintry was basically he was Worthy's. You don't need to say it. I think, uh-huh. I think we get it. I think Pillow. We, I think we know where we're going there. <laughs> right. Let's go. You're out of control. Two four eight five three nine ninety seven ninety seven. Wheel it in, Rico. Wheel it in. <laughs> it's Monday for Christ's sake. We got to get you to Friday. Let's go to Johnny ninety seven one. What's up, Johnny? How are you, bud? Good afternoon. Welcome. Ah, uh, good to be here. Thanks, guys. Uh, I, I just think the Lions fans, as as uh, people, we need to. Like, stop thinking like losers if we want our team to win. I don't know how you look at this game and think of anything more than a couple bright spots because with all the trash that happened, at the end of the game, we had eight downs of predictable football, which in football is not easy to get. We knew they were going to run the ball. We gave up 10, and we knew they were going to run the ball again, and we gave it up again. And that should just be enough for us to say that's not good enough. But for some reason, justifying, and I'll tell you right now, it doesn't have to be Jalen Hurts behind there. It doesn't have to be even mobile quarterback. We do not have interior pressure, and other teams are going to find ways to take advantage of that without legs as their quarterback. So I don't know how anybody looks at this game more than just a, a crappy loss. Well, yeah, I mean, all losses suck, but, like, there's certain times you go toe-to-toe against a team that's just elite and you fall short. I can live with it. This was one where you cost yourself the game by doing the same stuff that you did last year, and that's just not acceptable year one to two. That's Dan Campbell's job to root that out. Agreed, and that's progress. And if we if we do that and we haven't done that and our fan base needs to see these things as must, not just should. And, you know, taking these big gambles on an onside kick, it does send a wrong message to your yep. defense because at the end of the game, you have momentum. Maybe maybe Aiden Hutchinson makes a play. I don't know. Who knows what can happen? But when you do the onside, you're basically saying, well, we're losers. Hope we can make something crazy happen. And it's the first game of the season, too. It's well, just it not feels, a good message. It felt desperate to me, and I didn't think there was a need for it. Philadelphia is on the road. Your fans are going crazy, creating a, a, a playoff environment. Put the pressure on them. Let your defense feed off of it. Let them have to go out and make another series of plays exactly. deep in their own terror. Look, the whole thing. Jo- Johnny, I hated it. I hated the way he managed the clock at the end of the first half. I hated the onside kick. And you know what? I don't have anything against Dan Campbell. I want him to be successful. But damn it, this is what I said last year. Fix this stuff or I'm really going to get angry. And here we are. It's week one. Week one, I couldn't get out of one game with this guy running the game right. Not one. Right off the top. It's, it's true. It's true, and we got to demand more. And, I mean, in my opinion, Washington's got to be a must win. If we can't beat them, uh, I, I, I would be shocked if we could get six wins for the season. Well, and, after, and guess after what? After last week's performance, we must win that and, and that's not, and, and guess that's not acceptable. Look, I, I'll give you an example. And I know you guys don't care, and you guys hate New York, and you think we're all animals for the way we treat our teams. Robert Sala is in year two with the Jets. And I'm telling you right now, he is under immense pressure. Mm -hmm. Okay? Well, Zach Zach Wilson was hurt. Don't care. You're a defensive guy. Your defense stinks. If the Jets end up having another bad year, Robert Sala is in trouble. Think about it. And they're in the AFC, which is loaded. And they still expect you to go out there and win. Not the NFC, where anybody can win this. Right. Thing. It's just, guys, I don't want to go through the, the coaching cycle. I don't, I'm not calling for anybody to be fired. You know what I want? I want people to do the job. And I want the words that Dan Campbell speaks to become meaningful. Because if the players don't take on those words, if the team doesn't start doing those things, it's nothing but hot air. It's no different than what we do every day. We don't have control over the way the players play. Coaches are supposed to. 
this team that that was just like holy hell it's just a it's another form of last year in a brand new wrapper yeah and i don't want to do that all fall no. i wanted to come on the air today want to know and have a blast well they they lose they lose against commanders you're doing this thing alone <laughs> screw you man i am i i am not <clears throat> they better beat them no, because the people would need you here, Mike, because it'd be therapeutic for you to to exercise those demons. If I if I walk in next Monday and State loses to Washington, which I think is going to happen, and they lose to the Commanders, which I don't think Are is going to happen. Are you going to do this all week? The State <laughs> losing to Washington. Listen, they were three-point favorites. They're now three-and-a-half-point dogs. It's Big Ten going to the West Coast, and our quarterback has the yips. Are you going to argue that? We are. On to Seattle. 